Well, greetings, everybody. Welcome to this uh, week's session of Build Your AutoCAD IQ. In this session here, uh, we will be discussing beyond the basics, working with Publish and the eTransmit command in AutoCAD 2017. Uh, so here we are, December 1, 2016. And this would be us. A uh, quick introduction for those who haven't been here before. My name is Volker Coco. I'm an Autodesk Technical Support Specialist here in Lake Oswego, Oregon. Joined by my co-presenter and colleague, Ryan Bales, who is also a Technical Support Specialist here in Lake Oswego. Moderating for us today, answering your questions in the chat window, will be Naman Maiserwala, who is an Autodesk Expert Elite out of Westchester, Cincinnati. Always a pleasure to have Naman here, very intelligent uh, colleague of ours on the Expert Elite side, and uh, I'm sure he'll take care of you in the chat window, and Ryan and myself will also be joining him. All right, so uh, before we get started, uh, for those who have not been here, we'd like to welcome you to the Autodesk Help webinar series. And for those who have been here before, we want to welcome you as well. Uh, so it's good to, good to see everybody here. So first of all, about our Build Your AutoCAD IQ sessions. Uh, these are uh, sessions hosted by us in the uh, technical support uh, division of Autodesk for the AutoCAD and some of the verticals and uh, we hold these every week these sessions and we do Q&A as time allows as well as in the chat window we do have some upcoming topics uh, next week um, Jim Lapierre will be presenting AutoCAD for Mac 2016 tips and tricks so if you're using AutoCAD for Mac in your office or your colleagues are, uh, you may want to join us for that webinar. And that's going to be followed by our third dimension webinar series, uh, in this case, uh, Solid Editing Tips and Tricks in 2017. And then we're going to give you guys a break for a couple of weeks at least, and may, maybe for a year, okay? Because we'll be back next year after that with a uh, new lineup of webinars and some minor changes to our webinar series as well. Uh, that's to be announced. Anyway, uh, you can always find our previous webinars on our YouTube playlist uh, channel, uh, YouTube channel playlist, actually, is what we would call that. Uh, as we will make our data sets and any scripts or PowerPoints available for you to download from the link which you have uh, should already have received in the webinar reminder, and we will be sending a follow-up um, after the webinar, letting you know when those files are available for download. Um, if you have colleagues who have not um, joined this series or who are joining through your invitation, you can also redirect them to our webinar landing page where they can sign up and um, if you have any interest at all, if you like being on that uh, uh, so-called bleeding edge, shall we call it, of technology, or you just want to give some feedback to our Autodesk uh, product group, um, the AutoCAD Customer Council may well be for you. Here you can find betas, uh, join the beta program to test the new releases. You don't have to do that. You can just... Join that community and provide your feedback directly to the product group developers as well as the product managers. They do attend those uh, group uh, forums and they do want to see your input. So a good place uh, to check out if you haven't already been there. Okay, so let's take it one step further. Whoops, not backtracking. Um, as we are in Autodesk product support, we do want to make you aware of the Autodesk Knowledge Network. This is uh, quickly becoming one of the number one, um, uh, uh, shall we 
called a kitchen sink of resources for uh, on the Autodesk website. And here you can get downloads, you can find information uh, for troubleshooting, system requirements, uh, learning resources, uh, uh, pretty much anything having to do with your applications. And it's not just for AutoCAD or AutoCAD LT, it's also for the verticals or any other Autodesk products that um, you may be running. Good place to go check it out. All right, today's agenda. We're going to discuss the publish dialog box. It's not just really a dialog box. It's a series of commands and functions, but we were feeling very um, blasé about what to call our agenda title here. So um, we stay generic with the publish dialog box, OK? So we'll be creating a sheet list and publishing that to a PDF. And actually, Ryan Bales will be doing that. And then I'll follow up afterwards and um, just do a brief little um, overview, because you can't really get too in-depth about the e-transmit command. It's, it's a very simple, um, easy to use, I should say, tool to allow you to package or archive drawing sets uh, and ensuring that you have everything that was used in that set uh, available when um, opening up that archive. So uh, before we uh, do get started, I, I know for those of you who've been here, you're going, oh my gosh, not another poll. No, not another one. It's going to be the same one we ran last week, okay? So um, we'd like to know, hey, this year, first Autodesk Help webinar. I'll give it a few seconds here, about, well, we'll give it about 30. And, um, and it looks like uh, in the high 90s as far as return attendees. Hey, always, always glad to see you guys here. We know your time is valuable, so if you're returning, um, I'm hoping that we're doing something good for you. Um, as far as uh, all of you who are new, we really do welcome you here. So we hope this will be a, a worthwhile um, uh, experience for you. So just to show you those results there, um, so 5% of you are new, 95 returnees. Thank you again. All right, so let's do one more right now. And let's go ahead and, um, you know, we always we ask this question every week. Well, which AutoCAD-based application do you use? Um, and I always say, hey, we'd like to know what you're using so that we know we can tailor some of these events to that usage. Um, and the thing is, we have the new year coming up. We are going to be making some changes to the uh, webinar series. Um, and I think it'll be a good change for most of you because we will be introducing more of the verticals as far as um, uh, webinars that we'll be presenting. So um, at least I'm hoping it'll be a good thing for you. So let's go ahead and close this puppy up. It's not really a puppy. It's, it's a poll. Um, let's share that for you. Just kind of let you know who's here. This is um, actually pretty well, typically we have about 50% of the users being AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT, and then the other 50% working on the vertical. So we do seem to have a higher attendance of AutoCAD and AutoCAD LT users right now, which, hey, that's a good thing, all right? Always a good thing. And all of you are using AutoCAD if you're working with the verticals, you know, let's face it. They're built on AutoCAD, so I do believe, uh, actually, let me just show one more slide in this PowerPoint. We've got a couple of additional resources that you can make use of after this session to find out more about the tools that um, that we work with or that we've presented. And uh, there we go, additional resources. So all that said, all that little bit of time wasted there, it wasn't really. I think it was valuable. I am now going to go ahead and send you around the corner to Ryan Bales. Well, thanks, Volker. I'm going to go ahead and show my screen. Am I viewing the right screen? Is it AutoCAD? 
It it looks like it. Dang, yes. dang it. <laughs> Not paint. Not paint. Well, I thanks it was for joining Revit. us. It looks like Revit. I thought it was Microsoft Word, but it's all right. So thanks for joining us, everybody. We're going to start going through publish here. Uh, I'm sure most of you are probably familiar or aware with publish, um, kind of the functionality between it and plot. Um, sheet sets, not so much. We're going to make a sheet list or a drawing list. The names are kind of synonymous for some of the terms in AutoCAD, but we're going to focus on the publish tool. So the first thing that we really need to jump into in Publish is to create a page setup. In Publish, page setups really start the foundation of where you actually are going to publish to, from, how, and what it looks like. If you go back a couple of times with Volker and I, we did plot styles, um, and plotting was done also in that kind of realm uh, with um, Zach and Mike. And those are really good to tune back into and take a look at because we're going to cover some of that here, but not in depthly. We're just going to jump right into publish. So um, I've created a drawing set here. This was actually created with the the software that I'm familiar with, which is AutoCAD Plant 3D. Um, so the the title blocks and the, and objects in the drawing are actually associated with Plant 3D, but they've been stripped out of there, so they're clean-ish. So uh, the big thing we want to make sure when we have uh, when we go to publish is to check our page setup. So I've gone ahead and created one. Um, like always, I called mine Beyond the Basics. Uh, so we we've, we've got a basic one here, DWG to PDF. Uh, I try to use the default DWG to PDF when printing at all times. That's a personal preference. Um, we can argue philosophy on why we do that. I tend to do that just for safety and security reasons. Um, and also because Volker and I are not sitting next to a full-size plotter. And that would be really loud over a webinar to plot 10 sheets. So in here, uh, you can see I've just set a default CTB as monochrome, black and white. That's good. Um, I leave most of this default unless we really need to change some stuff. Uh, it, this is all company specific. So I don't have recommendations on if you should plot object line weights, that's up to you. Um, scale, we leave it one to one, plot and layout, plot and at the right sheet size, and then I just leave it as landscape. This is just the backbone of, of all plotting and printing. So go back and check out different plotting webinars and the plot style table series Volker and I did to make sure that you're up to speed on that. So I've got mine here, and the reason I have it set up pretty simple is because I just wanted to get a quick one in, so when we go to publish. Um, you can set PDF options here if you are pu publishing to PDF. And we're going to see this screen again in the publish window. And I'll go over why I leave this default here uh, and then why I go in, in publish. And, and here it's the highest level in publish. It's, you know, we're, we're, we're very specific to publishing a certain amount of drawings or certain specific drawings. So here we leave our default page set up the way we have it. If you change this, go ahead and change it. PDF options. I'm going to see Matthew's question here. So PDF options is right here in page setup. This is also in plot and in publish. So you can jump in there really at any time you're in those windows. So we're just going to hit OK. Uh, this little warning will come up if you've edited. This is just telling you, would you like to update your layouts to match the new page setup? I didn't change anything. In essence, I just opened it, but we'll just hit close. So you can see here, I've got uh, my drawing list. I've got this sheet, and then these ones are my included sheets. Um, I've just given them a quick revision in an area. You can kind of see my title block's kind of rough. And then I've got just a sample view of what we're going to print. So if you come over here, you can kind of see, we'll just pop a couple of these open. A nice little isometric shot of a piping facility. Um, this is the Plant 3D default sample project. So just kind of uh, kind of got some neat stuff. There's some sections and stuff. So what we want to do is we want to publish these. And so when you plot them, the normal procedure is Control-P, your type plot, and you're printing each individual sheet. 
And then if you print each individual sheet and you print it to PDF, and then you go in, you can you have to actually group them together. And so to do that, you need a software like Foxit or Adobe or Acrobat, and you need to basically take and mesh those drawings together in the right order, orientation and whatnot. So Publish really helps to unify the plotting publishing procedure. And the reason why I set my title sheet to have the right page set up and why this sheet, for example, does not have that is because for, for speed and repeatability, I always have plotted from my title sheet or published from my title sheet. So when we go to publish here, we can see that the default page setup is set to my page setup file. I can overwrite the default to the actual one. This isn't this is essentially the same. All drawings added to the publish window are going to be there. So let's take a little bit here and look through the publish dialog box or window or whatever you want to call it. You can see we have selected sheet details. This will change depending on what you have selected. It will tell you what the device that we're using, the plot size, the scale, and the override output device. Uh, this is really important to remember if you're having a little bit of mismatch with where it's printing and how it's printing. Um, precision you can change. I haven't noticed a huge difference in this. Um, I, again, haven't plotted professionally in a little while, so it could be uh, just not remembering what it does. Um, I typically never publish in the background. And the reason is, is that I feel like it's, um, it's more prone to, to uh, being interrupted or, or really just doesn't really change what you do. Uh, if I'm publishing hundreds of sheets, I want to make sure that it's publishing the right sheets uh, and in order, and I'll sit and watch it. And that's, again, a personal preference. If you like to publish in background and go on and keep working, go ahead. Um, plot stamps, these are really important if you need time and date stamps, like this one right here on the right. This will tell you where the file is located, the file name, and plot stamps can be configured to show device name, time and date, and then user-defined fields. Again, this stuff is covered before and it's pretty easy to configure uh, and it's really company specific so there's not much we really want to show here. This is all up to you. Uh, the publish options, this is um, depending on what you have selected over here, these can be overwritten or not. So if I were to change to my page setup and change my publish to plotter named, this actually goes away. And the reason this goes away is because I've already specified in my page setup this information. So if I go ahead and leave my page setup there and we go ahead and print this file, it's going to print it at this location, which is here in my webinar dataset folder. Um, and we can go ahead and just select that and hit publish. And you can publish one sheet at a time. Uh, nothing wrong with that. It's a little bit slower than plot, but it does give you the kind of extra steps. Uh, it'll prompt you to save the sheets, and we're going to go over the sheet list here in just a moment. And so if we hit no, it's going to go ahead and publish this sheet. Uh, and we'll go ahead and it'll pop it open, and here we are. And so whenever you have the plotter named and page setup set and you've overwritten those PDF options, it's going to automatically name the file to whatever file it is named in. So I've called this file uh, T001 title block. So it just named it T001 titleblock.pdf. Pretty basic, pretty quick, just like the plot window would do. Uh, nothing really fancy about that. And so when we go back into publish, we come in here and say we want to change a couple things. Uh, the important thing to do is to uh, remember where you need to make those changes. If it's in the page setup and you want to keep it in the page setup, go to there. I've always preferred to do it here, and that's because I have my page setup set, um, and I know I'm going to use it still for the CTB and the page size, but I want a little bit of extra configuration. So what I do is load it here, and then we'll edit it up above. So before I do that, I want to show you the cool thing about publishing versus plotting, and that's sheet lists. So sheet lists are a group of sheets or drawings that we can continually draw from and plot, and these will be kept in the same order. So if I were to go here 
and add these sheets and just hit OK. And this is important to remember too. If you're in here, you can choose to print models, models, and layouts, or just layouts. So for this, just doing layouts, that's where my title blocks are. And it's easier. You can change this. I typically leave it. It's important to know which files you have, and this is a pretty good little feature. So if we hit select, it's going to actually do, say we had a duplicate. I already had T001. So if I don't want T001 because I already had it, I'll just hit cancel. So you can see this is actually the right order. That's the order we want. But if we were to take some of these sheets and move them by dragging them up and down, we can rearrange the sheets in the, w the order in which they'll publish. And this is important in two ways. If you're publishing single sheet files, so each of these sheets represents one PDF document, they'll just change the order in which they're plotted. If you go ahead and make this a multi-sheet file, this will actually reference the page numbers in the active PDF document that's created. So right now, page number one would be T001, page two, P001, and so on until we get to here, and then we're out of order. That's important to remember if you're going ahead and edit these. So with a sheet list, you can actually drag those into the right order in which you want to plot them, save your sheet list, and then it'll plot in that fashion. I've created a sheet list here, and what we're going to do is we're going to load that. When you load a sheet list and you have sheets loaded, you will get this warning. If you want to replace them or append them, you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to replace because I want my order that I set up already. So we do that, and you can see it just kicks all of these back in order the way we want it. It resets my page setup to default to be none. And there's the status is important to remember. If there's no errors, then we'll just, you know, we're ready to print. So from here, I want to go back to where I was talking about for our published location. So publish to, which is our device, I want to publish mine to PDF. And this is a little bit redundant in that my page setups are set to DWG to PDF, but the override is now set to DWG to PDF because I set it here. So if I change these to general documentation, you know, I can we can look at those and it'll override those settings. These are more like presets, uh, plot styles, and and really just the uh, the quality of the plots. You can see that it reset the location of the documents where they're going to be stored, and all of these settings have been reactivated. So what we're going to do is change this preset. We'll just leave it as general documentation. We're going to leave it as PDF. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab all these. And you can do that by Control A, just click and drag. And we're going to change these to be on the basics. So this lets me know that I did have the right page set up. And so I'm going to go over that one more time and just show you something that's really cool. So if you go ahead and hit Cancel, and we'll hit No. Let's hit publish again, and we load our sheet list. If you remember, there's only one sheet that has my page set up. And the reason why I do that is because if I'm always going to print with that title sheet, I don't need to have a page set up in every sheet. Now, it is a good idea to do that. But if you don't, you can always you know, save your bacon by selecting all of these sheets and the first page setup, or the first sheet will allow you to modify the page setup. This will globally change all selected sheets to this page setup. So this overrides these drawings with a page setup file that is not actually stored in their pages or drawings, which is very cool if you're not sure that every sheet has the right page setup. So we're going to hit Beyond the Basics. Now every sheet's going to print with the page setup that is actually only stored in this drawing. So that's pretty helpful if you're printing hundreds of sheets and you're not sure if, if they have the page set up or if you're not sure if the page setups have been modified, which I've seen happen a half a dozen times at least. So if you go to Publish To again, we'll change this back to PDF. It keeps this all the same because this is stored in our sheet list. Um, if you ever make changes to your sheet list and you want to save that, you can just hit Save and we can override our sheet list, we'll replace that, and now this information is also now stored in our sheet list. So if we hit cancel, hit publish, load our sheet list, 
it's going to tell you that the file contains a conflict with the current published dialog box and published options. That's because I made the um, page setups overwritten. So we hit close, we can see it's going to have imported beyond the basics. That means that that, sheet, that plot, or page setup does not exist in that drawing and it's been imported. So that's okay. That's the same as changing this. We force of habit, I always go and make sure I have the right one selected anyway. But this allows us to know that that has actually selected the right one. So even if I were to hit publish, it would print correctly. All right, and enough with page setups because I know everyone loves them so much. So the reason we're going to do DWD PDF or any of these PDF presets is for quality. The reason I do publish to PDF is to override the settings here. So our publish option information will allow us to change the location and the file name and the multi-sheet file. And then like I mentioned before, all of these settings can now be overwritten here just like in the plot options. So if we were to change all these options, we can merge these, we can override them. We can capture fonts, turn this on and off, hyperlinks, bookmarks, etc. This is all stored in the, pot, the plot option as well. So for this demonstration, we're going to keep it as a multi-sheet file. This will make all of these documents into one group. It's important to remember if you use an external PDF writer, uh, QPDF or others, they have a little bit different language in them and sometimes they don't work quite the same as the internal DWG to PDF writer. So prompt for a file name will allow us to uh, save the file name when it plots. If we wanted to set this as a specific file name here, you can do that here. And then location. So I plotted them here before. If we browse, we can see this is the single sheets. I don't want to put it there. I just want to put it up one. So let's hit select. We're going to prompt for file name so we can save it and we'll leave it as a multi-sheet and hit OK. So that stuff remained, the, uh, most of that remained the same. The locations changed. And you can change this location even if you're not overriding this here. So if you were to leave this as uh, plotter name and page setup, this location can also be changed. So don't forget that. You, you don't have to have it set to the PDF to change the default location. It's just handy uh, in this cool little dialog box we have here. So we're going to hit publish and just check these out real quick. So we'll hit publish. Um, I've got two sheets in there I did. So let's do, uh, let's call this one best because I'm super confident it's going to be just stellar. So we'll hit select. This is going to prompt you again to shave your sheet less. We already did this, so I'm just going to hit no. And now the publish uh, little pop-up comes up here. This is only on if you're plotting in the foreground. And like I said, I like it because I want to see if it's going to fail or if there's going to be an issue. Um, and there is none. I get my little notification bubble. We can open it up. We can see where they're plotted, et cetera. So we're going to go back to our folder and we'll open up the best. So here we are. Pages one of nine. Here's all my sheets in the correct order. We can go ahead and Look at all the pretty work that I put in here and be sad that all these lines are all merged together. You don't have to be sad. Volker's not sad. So we printed monochrome, looks good. We can look at all of our sheets, look at all of our information. Um, we can look to where these are actually stored. This is the DWG information. It's important to remember this is different than the um, the actual plot stamp. This is a field that is that is referencing the DWG. So if you have a plot stamp turned on, it's not going to read the same as mine. Mine is referencing the DWG. This is a built-in feature to Plant 3D. It helps you notify. It's really just so you can see what project you're in. Pretty handy. So that's good. I like it. Um, we can um, Adobe is pretty cool. You can hover over this, and text shows up. Tells you that it's SHX text. Pretty neat. So that's a multi-sheet. Pretty simple, nothing too, too complex. Um, so now what we're going to do is show you the other feature, which in my opinion replaces the plot function if you're doing group plotting. So when you plot, you can set all the same settings. We can set them here. Um, if you're doing DWG to PDF, you have a little bit less functionality in, oh, 
in where this file is going to be saved. I feel like getting a warning, right? Huh. Memory allocation. Oh, you can. You, it's a little bit less. The, you can't actually save the file name as easily as you can in publish, in my opinion. Um, so if we go back into publish and we pick our sheet list, place our sheets, do all this, save our page setup. We're going to go ahead and just change this to single sheet file. So if we go remove this, you can see that it removes the prompt for name. So that is going to that tells you two things. One, you can't change the name of the plotted single sheets because they're going to automatically pick this name right here which is the file name and the view name in a sort of concatenated or grouped together naming convention. Um, that changes when you add sheets to the drawing. If you do add the prefix title or prefix sheet title and file name, this if we were to turn this off and then add a sheet, it would only add title block. So that's the reason why you keep that on. It's kind of obnoxious to have that turned off. Um, it would try to save all of those PDFs named title block. And we don't want that. So we'll leave this. Um, if you want to change these sheet names, you can change them here. So if you were to set up your company standards to where your sheets or layouts were named the actual sheet name, so P001, T001, you could actually add these and not have prefixes, and that would be fine. So with single sheet, we'll go ahead and turn that off. We're going to place these in our single sheet data set. Hit OK, and I'm just going to hit Publish. Uh, we're not going to save it again because we've already done that. So this is going to process all nine sheets in the same fashion, but it's actually creating nine separate PDFs. And so we can see that if we go into Single Sheets here, and they're all saved 11.32 AM local time, which is right now. The plot log is saved from there, and we can open them up and see you know, each single sheet, single view. So that's pretty handy if you don't want them all grouped together. Um, I've used this when we were creating uh, check sets or, you know, if you're trying to create, you, you've printed 200 drawings and you have one drawing that's wrong and you want to replace that. You need something like Adobe um, and you could print this single sheet or publish the single sheet just the same, then take this single sheet and reinsert it into the correct set. It helps if you have a you print 200 drawings and one of them doesn't have an engineer stamp. Uh, I think most of us have run into something like that and it's kind of annoying. So this is helpful for that. And really, I mean, this just about rounds out publish. Um, a couple quick things I wanted to r remind you on the publish side. Um, remember that when you are publishing, and you ignore the system printer and print to PDF, it will overwrite the, some of the plot style information. It's not exclusive, uh, only unless you don't have a page set up and if you've changed some of the stuff here. So if you have your plots or page set up correctly displayed and you don't want to overwrite this information, remember to use the plotter named and page setup because this will defile back to the plot, the, the publish options we set up there. So, for example, I'll show you that right here. So we go here, these are the options that we're talking about. So if we set these options to not include this information, and then we, we differ from this plotter named and not set up in publish, it's going to overwrite that. So this overwrites these settings located in the page setup. It's not super confusing, but you'll see it when you go to get to it. Um, if you, let me see. So if you go ahead and change these names, um, it'll force it. Like I said, if you, you select all drawings and force it to this sheet, like we did here, it will force all these sheets to use the same uh, page setup. And I wanted to make sure I went over that again. I made, I'm trying to make, remember why I made note of that because it's really important. Um, a lot of times people will go through and individually pick these. Uh, and if you pick out one style that you like, just go ahead and click there and select it. And I've done that with uh, several hundred drawings. Um, 
you can also drag and drop drawings to the publish screen. So if you've got um, if you've got publish open, we're just going to remove that sheet. Um, we have all of our drawings in our data set. You can see them here. If you actually grab these, you can click and drag them straight to publish, and it will load them. And like I said, if you don't change the name or the prefix, it's going to just throw them all in here as title block. So in this instance, it only grabbed one sheet. So we want to make sure that this is selected. So just the weird procedure about this is if you did turn this off or change this, you actually have to load one sheet with the new settings and then remove that sheet. And then when you grab these and drag and drop them, they'll be inserted correctly. Of course, they're out of order. So if we go ahead and select these, we don't have our page set up. So that's why I was why it's really important for the files to be as, uh, arranged correctly and for the page setup to be in whatever file you want printed first. For me, it's my title block or title sheet. So go there and there it is. So that's important if you have a ton of files and you want to drag them all in here without having to hit open or if they're all located in different spots. I mean, if you went to your server and typed star.pdf or star.dbd, star excuse me, star.dwg in your search window, it's going to pull up any DWG file in that directory. So you could essentially plot every file you have at one time. Uh, it would take you a long time, and if you call us and ask us why it's taking a long time to print 3,000 pages, it takes a long time. So I think that's about it for uh, publish. Do we want to do a little bit of questions on publish before we jump ship to e-transmit? Yeah, Ryan. Uh, hey, great presentation. Um, we do have a few questions, so we might as well take care of these. Uh, the yeah, first yeah. one, and you have repeated it, um, shown it a couple times, but one of the questions was, um, how do we get to that PDF options? Mm -hmm. um, and there are numerous ways to do this. Yeah. So. So one way is to do it here. You can do it in uh, options for your plotters. If you had DWG to PDF selected here, um, we can go to, you know, you can configure this. You can do a lot of it um, in, the, uh, in the PC3 files. So if you open them up and you have the device settings, these are kind of a more crude looking way at it. This, this can kind of shortcut. You can see some of these uh, merge lines is shown. Um, the color and graphics are shown. This is the oldest way of doing this. So that's through options, which will load the plotters window. Um, I don't do it there just because it's not pretty and I like to do pretty stuff. So if you go to uh, plot, you can see it here. This is just in the plotting window, which by the way is identical to the page setup window. So if you click out of here and go to page setup, and we hit Beyond the Basics and we do Modify. You can see that that window looks almost identical here. Just a couple different options you can do in Plot that you can't do here um, and vice versa. So there's PDF options there. Um, it's like I said, this is virtually the same as what you see in the PC3 files. It's just arrayed in a very nice way of, of getting all your data together. Um, and then again, in, in Publish, when you go here, you can go ahead and pick publish options if this is set here. If this is set to the named plotter, it's going to default to whatever the page setup was. And we just showed where page setup is. So this is only uh, selectable if, you've, if you're overriding the page setup's plotter, which then can override these settings. So it's important to remember when you change this to PDF, and you say we're going to print DWG to PDF, you're only overriding the plot device and the page setup detail, it'll say specified and current page setup and published on multi sheet PDF. It's a very limited amount of information that is going to be overwritten or overrode or however you want to say it. And so that's, that's why I leave it pretty basic until I get here and then I offer myself that concession to be able to edit it here. Okay. Um, so, um, we have two quick points right now. The first one is, 
first one. one. I, you know, it's actually um, pretty much the exact same thing. So I think it was five, six years ago, the name changed. So batch plot uh, is the published command. So if you type batch plot, it's just going to pop the published window. So I think. Probably 2009, look at the Volker, he's got much better history on it than I do, or Naman, is when the, a lot of this naming convention changed. Yeah, and I, I can't remember the exact date, but, you know, back um, back in release 13 AutoCAD, we had the external utility, yeah. which was a batch plot utility, and uh, I forget now how long that was around for, but a published command basically has replaced placed it, it's integrated it with AutoCAD as opposed to being an external utility which launched an external section of AutoCAD. Well, and I think with Publish, you're offered the option to publish in the background, yeah. which yeah. gives you that same kind of utility feature. So if we select all this and we plot in the background and we save it here, and we'll just do um, create a new folder called background plot and we'll just we'll save it in there and just leave everything the same. We're gonna call it background dot PDF and we'll just hit OK and we'll just hit remember this is turned on, we'll hit publish. So what you're gonna see is it's gonna take a little bit longer because it's not using as much system memory to do so. You can see the status bar. This is telling you the status bar is active now. If you look down here you can see this. So if you ever open this, it'll tell you what's plotted so far, um, and you can view and set those there. And then if we just go to our normal folder, oh man, there we go. We go to our background plot. We can see that nothing's there yet. That's because we made one multi-sheet file and it's still processing. I've always noticed that the time in which it takes to process in the background is, is a lot higher. If you're not pressed for time and that's okay and you're just not worried about it and you want to go on your merry way and create a new drawing and get open and start drawing lines, um, you know, while it's plotting, it's going to continue to do that while you're working. That is the one benefit to plotting in the background. I don't like it for speed reasons. I don't usually plot unless I that's the only thing I'm doing. But I have used the plot in the background when I had a lot of stuff to do and needed to just plot a set and have somebody else do it. Okay, uh, great. Uh, so some good insights there, Ryan. I am going to cut you off right now. I'm, there are a few questions. If you could um, answer those in the chat window, that would be awesome. Yeah. I am, uh, the reason I'm putting Ryan in this place and so that I can show you the rest of our presentation, which in this case um, is going to be me presenting um, on, what am I presenting on again? Presenting on the e-transmit command. So um, there are quite a few people who are aware of the e-transmit command, uh, but I'm often surprised at how many are not aware of the uh, command and, and what it can do for you. What is eTransmit? What can it do for you? eTransmit uh, is a utility that allows us to create an electronic transmittal of our project. And uh, why would I want to use this? Well, oftentimes you have probably experienced this as well. We see it here in support. We will request a file from our customer, or maybe I'm working on a project and I'm waiting on some files from um, my consultant or the uh, the people I'm doing working for, work for, and they send me the file, but I'm missing the fonts, or I'm not sure what plot style table to apply to get the right pin weights. Maybe I'm missing X references. Okay, eTransmit will take care of those type of problems because it will scour a project to see what files are necessary to, to transmit. Um, it's also a great tool for archiving 
your drawing files. So you're at thirty percent of your project, you need to create an archive. Well why not use eTransmit to to zip that project up or move it to a location on, on a different server, um, however you want to do it, and, and just make sure that all the files are um, available for when that set drawing set is looked at. So first of all, we can type eTransmit at the command prompt. We can also go to the application browser here, uh, and under the publish options, we have eTransmit. And you'll see that we have archive right above that. Well, eTransmit and archive, they're basically the same thing. And by the way, if you're using the Sheet Set Manager, uh, there is a um, uh, the ability to archive or e-transmit your drawing set directly from the sheet set manager. So um, let's take a look at this e-transmit. Um, you do need to have your drawing saved for, for continuing, uh, and I'm I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And what it does, it comes up with this create transmittal dialog. Like anything else in AutoCAD, when we have styles involved. There's always a standard style. Although in this case we don't have an annotative e-transmittal. Okay, we only have a standard setup. Okay, so this can be modified. You can have different templates for the different type of packages that which you may want to um, maybe you're doing an archive so you want one template for that. Maybe you're doing a transmittal where you have to send uh, X amount of files to one person on the project, but the another um, uh, team working on the same project may need all the, all of your files plus some additional documentation, uh, maybe Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, whatever you that you want to include in the transmittal. So you could create a template for that. So we'll get right back to creating a template. Let's take a look over here under current drawings. It, we have a files tree and a files table view. The tree view is always one of my favorites, even when working with the reference files or anything else in AutoCAD, where we may have a hierarchy of files. All right, so in this case here, um, with default settings under files tree, it shows me my current drawing, the name of that being transmit.dwg, and then it you'll see that it lists a uh, color dependent plot style table and plotter configuration file and external references. And we can expand the branches on these and you'll see that uh, clicking on this, I have a custom CTB. Okay, and normally I'd have to remember to attach that to, um, to my email or archive that I want to send to my client. But here AutoCAD showing me it's there and that it will be selected if I create a transmittal. Here we also see that we have a plotter configuration file that I'm using. So in this case, I haven't made any modifications to DWG to PDF.pc3, and anybody running AutoCAD is going to have that PC3 driver installed. So I don't need to waste bandwidth by including this, and I'm not going to. So all I have to do is uncheck that. But you'll see that in this drawing we have one XREF attached, and that happens to be the title block. Well, I definitely want to include that, so I make sure that it is checked. And AutoCAD's done all the work for me here. It's uh, in a nice visual way. I'm going to go over to Files table, and you can see this in a different view. Uh, again, I prefer the tree view because it allows me to see the level of hierarchy here. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, what if I want to add a file? Okay. Um, for example, I'm I'm not seeing maybe um, maybe I have some spreadsheets or or Word documents. I can easily click on Add File here, and then select the particular file uh, that I want to include in my transmittal. Unfortunately, I didn't plan for this, so. I actually don't have any other documentation. Everybody reads my mind, so I don't need that documentation. My drawings are so darn good, I don't need no documentation, okay? <laughs> so, 
<laughs> so anyway, uh, but the option is there, and you can include anything you would normally send with a data set. Okay, you could also um, create some additional notes here. So um, this is um, our thirty percent phase. Uh, maybe do something like that. Submittal. There we go. Um, and we'll take a look at the report in a moment. Now the thing is that maybe um, I, I, I want to just make sure of some of the particulars here. Uh, so I can go into transmittal setups. I know I'm going to use this particular setup because this project's going to go on for a while. So I'm going to click new and the transmittal will be, will be based on standard and I'll just call this Acme. Yeah, because I'm so original with names. Okay. And that brings me to the Modify Transmittal Setup dialog. And here's what's cool. We can, by default, we can package up our entire drawing set as a zip file. Okay? Uh, AutoCAD ships with its own archiving utility. So uh, even if you don't have any, every operating system has it now. But even if you didn't, it would package these up. Or we could say, hey, I just want you to copy all these files to a folder on my network or on my hard drive, my local drive, a flash drive, whatever. And it'll do that as a set of files, which, um, well, you could package up later. Or maybe you're just um, archiving somewhere on the server, okay, as a historical um, uh, backup. You can also when you're running the e-transmit, you can convert those files to AutoCAD 2000 and whatever, okay? Um, so we often have this, right, where we work with um, clients or, or customers who they're still using AutoCAD 2007 or maybe even the 2010 format, uh, primarily to work with some kind of a, um, uh, well, maybe that's, the AutoCAD version they're on or they're using a third-party tool that, you know, has to work with those particular um, um, drawing formats. One of the cool things here is that if you're working, say, with a vertical like AutoCAD Architecture and or AutoCAD Civil 3D and the person you're sending the files to does not have that, uh, and maybe they are working with an older version of AutoCAD. Well, they're going to have problems with those object, uh, with those AUC objects. Okay, so you could even convert these to a format exploding those AUC objects, similar to using the um, export to AutoCAD command. If you're familiar with that, anyway. All right, so we can tell. Look, when I uh, uh, when I archive these or move these to a particular folder, uh, let's go ahead and uh, use an organized structure. Okay, so a hierarchical uh, structure. You can tell, hey, bunch them all up in one folder or use the same structure that I'm, um, um, that I have set up right now. So some cool stuff there. Um, actually, just for grins here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the format here to AutoCAD 2010. I'll call this Transmittal Setup um, uh, Acme 2010 uh, Project, and for lack of better words. I can send an email with the Transmittal, also a very cool thing. Okay. Oh, I did neglect this here prompt for a file name and uh, we can either prompt for one or it'll it'll just create one based on the default transmittal name. Um, anyway, we can send an email with the uh, transmittal. We can set the default plotter to none. Uh, this may be important if you know that uh, your customer is going to get that message saying, hey, the plotter doesn't exist. Plotter configuration in your drawing doesn't exist um, when they open the file. So. Uh, you may want to just build up some goodwill and set that plotter to none to begin with, and they, can, they won't get that error. You can also bind any external references. So if I want to bind the uh, title block to this drawing, I can. 
And because I can, just because I can, I will. Darn it. And I'm going to use the insert option, though. Just like the XREF bind function, we can either bind or insert. And, of course, I prefer the insert. You can also clean up those drawings a little bit by selecting to purge them of any unused data. Uh, remove design feed if you choose to do so, if you use that. Now, this is important. Um, there's an option, include options. A lot of these are selected, like include materials, data links, um, and web files. Um, include unloaded file references if they were attached. I don't have those, but the most important one is the fonts. Okay? When we took a look at this previously, there were no fonts listed under that file tree. The fact of the matter is in this drawing, I have three custom fonts. And if I don't send those fonts with the file, then um, my customer is not going to get the drawing looking the way I set it up to look. So I'm going to go ahead and check this. And I'll click OK. And my Acme 2010 project is now the current one, the transmittal setup. And you'll see that we now have font maps here that have been included, shape compiled fonts that have been included, as well as true type fonts that exist in the drawing. So Arial exists because that is my standard font in this drawing, NO3 here. And then these three fonts are the three custom ones right here. Simplex is defined in the style, in one of the font styles. Um, and we have the ACAD font map. Now, the thing is, I haven't made any modifications to the font map, but because I chose fonts, it did include it. And if you had made modifications to it, you might want to send it. I'm not going to. I don't need to send this. I also don't need to send the simplex font because every AutoCAD install has that. And I definitely don't need to send Arial because every Windows installation has Arial. So I, I'm going to uncheck this. Okay. Now, the one thing to be aware of is under this true type font file branch, it's usually not a big deal to send a shape compiled font. Most of these are public domain. At least everyone that's sent with AutoCAD, um, most of the ones you'll find on the internet are going to be public domain. But under true type fonts, um, be careful about sending a true type font. Most of these are copyrighted, unless you've gone to one of the um, freeware font sites uh, where you can download, install it. But, um, you know, first of all, I could send Arial. Everybody has Windows, has Arial, so no big deal. But um, if this were my Star Trek font, okay? then, um, um, well, actually, my Star Trek font is freeware. But let's say I'd bought it and then send it to my customer, all right, because I know they're a Star Wars fan. Um, somebody could get in trouble, and that person would most likely be me if somebody wanted to rat me out for sending a copyrighted font to another person. I'd get in trouble, bad trouble. Okay. Enough of that. Here's our uh, trans submittal note. I'm going to go ahead and click View Reports. And this is really nice for documentation as to what type of files I've sent to my customer and when I sent those. So if you keep track of, um, you know, the the project, most people should. Okay, then uh, this would be a report that you could save to an external file. And uh, you would have documentation, and you could say, hey, look, but I, I sent you those. Here's the documentation. I'm going to go ahead and click Close. I would have wanted to save that first, though. I'm going to click OK. And it prompts me for file, file name here. So it's using the transmittal Acme zip. I'm going to click Save. And then, having done that, let's take a look at what we have here. Uh, open up my file manager here. It's not that hard to open up a file manager, Boker. There we go. All right, so well, here's my drawing file. Here's my transmittal, so it's 
got that packaged up. Let's take a look inside. It creates a folder for the fonts. Okay, pretty nice. Expand that a little. Okay, so it's done that. Creates a um, folder for the um, custom CTB that I uh, am submitting. It's got the drawing. And then the transmittal documentation itself. And what's nice about this is that I often get uh, reference files sent in a set. And here it will actually tell you what the root drawing is. So you don't have to scrounge around looking, okay, what file do I open initially in order to see my X references pop up? Okay, so it does have that root file. Anyway, we've <laughs> pretty much run out of time. I've I've used up all of our allotted time, but let's um, let's do a quick poll here. Uh, uh, while I'm doing that, um, I'm sure we can get a couple more uh, questions answered. But the big question of the day, for us anyway, for myself, for Ryan, for Naman, is did you learn something new in today's webinar? Actually, it says session, but I ad lib a lot, okay? So forgive me for that. If you don't want to, that's fine, too. I can deal with it. All right. Hey, so um, right above 90%, learn something new. Um, glad this was worthwhile for you. Um, for those who um, didn't learn anything new, I'm really sorry to hear that, because uh, we, we don't want to waste your time. Uh, we try to make this a uh, learning experience. Um, that said, even if you haven't learned anything today, we hope you will appear next week. And Brian and myself, we will be back next year. So Yes, yes we will. Okay. <laughs> so let me share this poll, and then I'm going to just say uh, a fond farewell. And... Um, uh, I hope you guys have a uh, safe and happy new year. So, uh, so long and thanks for all the fish. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean we, we, we take <laughs> donations. <laughs> I don't know that we're allowed to ask for that. <laughs> I'm I'm going to hit exit and and thanks everybody. <laughs> Bye.